Hello everybody, I'm Itek from Verso Studio and I would like to welcome you to another Blender tutorial. In this video I will show you how to disintegrate objects in Blender as you can see in the result right now. For this tutorial you will need just Blender and nothing else. If you are watching in the future you can safely follow in the Blender 2.8 but in time of making this video I've encountered problems with baking for the particles so I will stick to 2.79 just for now. So let's jump right into the blender and first I will create some geometry so I will have something to disintegrate. Simple t-shape should be sufficient enough. With the primitive cube mesh and few extrusions the modeling phase is finished. Just remember to always give everything some reasonable name. Now we will need some other object that will carve away the t-shape. Its shape is limited only by our imagination. And I am lazy, so another big cube with a lot of subsurf will do. And to remember the naming, also when you scale the cube in object mode, you should apply the scaling afterwards with Ctrl A. Well, let's make the animation. Just two keyframes, nothing fancy. In the first frame, the carver object should be outside of the T-shape. And in the last, uh, let's say 160, should be completely covering it. The carving effect will be achieved with boolean difference, so add the boolean modifier to the t-shape, set it to difference and pick the carver. To actually see what is happening, select the carver and in its object properties set the maximum display to just bounce. It's already doing what we want, but it's really boring. Some displacement on the carver should do the trick. Select carver, add a displace modifier after the subserve and create a new texture. Go to the texture settings and set the type to clouds and size to something bigger, for example 1. It doesn't look bad, uh, but the noise is too static for my taste. Uh, back in the carver displays modifier, uh, changing the texture coordinate from local to global should solve my problem. And I finally have the effect I'm looking for. Now I just have to add the particles. But how? I need to somehow separate the geometry generated by the boolean modifier from the rest of the t-shape. My approach will be putting it all to the vertex group. So go to the t-shape's data properties and create one. The vertex assigning will be done with dynamic paint. Select the carver, go to its physics properties and create a dynamic paint brush. To make sure all the vertices we want affected are inside the influence of the brush, set the paint source to volume plus proximity with really small distance. Now select the T-shape and make it a canvas. Make sure we are painting to vertices and the surface type is weight. If you now set the output vertex group to our group that we created earlier, the vertices will be effectively added to the group and we can mask the rest away with the mask modifier. Voila! We have just the carving surface now and we can emit the particles from it. Start with making a new particle system. The start and end should be frames where the actual carving starts and ends. In your scene it will probably have different values than in mine. The lifetime can be definitely lower and randomness is always welcome. Also make sure the particle system is using all previous modifiers. I don't really like the falling, so I will turn off the gravity and create some turbulence instead. Play with the turbulence settings until you're happy. When it's behaving as you want, Go back to the particle settings, emit much more of them and bake the simulation. Now you can turn off the dynamic paint and mask modifiers. Everything looks fine, but the particles are just dots. 
Let's give them some shape. Switch to the second layer and create Icosphere with only one subdivision. Set shading to smooth, rename it and we are done. All the way back in the particle settings, find the render tab, set it to object and pick the Icosphere. It would be nice if they became smaller and smaller as they fly away. So scroll down to the textures tab, create new one and jump to its settings. The type will be blend, mapping coordinates strength or particle and the influence will be size not time. I want exactly the opposite, so I will change the size to minus one. Some more randomness cannot hurt, so back in the particles rendering, randomize the size. The effect is done now. We just need to set up some nice materials and render the result. I will just add camera to the scene and change the layout so I will have node editor to my disposal. Also, it's nice to pick some frame where we can see all the action happening. Turn off the carver object for rendering and just for now turn off also the particles. Let's start with the easiest material, the outside of the T-shape. As you already know, I am lazy person, so the material will be just one principled shader. Choose some nice base color and play with the rest of the values until you like the result. I am using the version 2.79, but the daily build, so I can use new bevel node, and if I can, why shouldn't I? The boringness of the surface somehow overtakes my laziness, so I will make at least some variation in roughness and normals with procedural Voronoi texture. To see the lighting better, we should use some HDR map, but it's definitely not necessary for this tutorial. Now the inside of the T-shape. We need to create new material slot and new material on the T-shape object. And also put the same material on the carver. You should immediately see the effect on the carved polygons. This material will be super simple too. I will use the same Voronoi as before, but now I will run it through the color ramp to give it directly some color. To achieve the molten look, the color ramp will run from white across yellow, red and finally to black. The diffuse shader should be actually enough, just increase the color value over 1. It will not emit any light, but it will reflect more light than what's falling to the surface. Ok, and finally the particles. Turn them back on. Find the particle sphere and put on it the same material as we used on the insides. Make sure it's unique and change few things. We will use the same color ramp but the source won't be some random texture, but the age of the particles. Every particle has different lifetime, so just divide the age by the lifetime and we are good to go. It's nice, but the color ramp needs to be mirrored. I let the render settings and compositing up to you. Just be aware of the motion blur. The T itself changes topology every frame, so the motion blur can get really confused. Just go to its object settings and turn off the deformation motion blur. Also if you want the proper spart effect, the motion blur shouldn't be so even. So play with the global motion blur settings shutter curve to give it kind of this shape. And that's finally all from me. I hope you found something interesting and useful in this tutorial. I thank you very much for watching and till the next time, happy blending.